time and when will it be time for that to be instituted. That, that order should be in the church now. Uh, and and if, if the offense has become uh, so great that it's causing an unrest in your soul, uh, then there is one recourse you have if you have become to the point where it's offensive and it's troubling you, uh, then speak about it. If it's offending you, come to the ministry, and then if the ministry gives advice on it, how to handle it, consider that advice. Consider what the ministry would say. And remember, the ministry is not, if the ministry is right before God, they're not going to condone uh, any evil that might want be practiced among God's people. We cannot successfully take all evil out from among God's people, but we can keep ourselves from that evil and not be partakers of that evil. They're, they're, the, the church will not, uh, it will not rid itself of rumors of what might be, of what someone would think there could be, that will be until the coming of Christ. But we can separate and purge uh, any sin that is causing offense, and we know that sin is there. We can deal with that. All right? Any other comments or anything on that, Sister Annette? I was just going to say we were always taught to not take up someone else's offense. And as you say, realize that the ministry is dealing with it or has dealt with it and whatever they have, you know, judgment or whatever uh, solution that they have made, just leave it alone, keep yourself out of everybody else's business and you're yeah, better thing. off and I have yes. the couple times that I have not done that I've been in real trouble <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a troublesome place sometimes we can't do that those of us that work in the ministry like working in the food ministry and such stuff and we're around a lot of the saints you know I'm not in my house all the time or I'm not away from the church I'm here and the, on the church grounds where there is people. We, we all are, Sister Shirley. We all are. And uh, I hear everything. Uh, I, I hear everything, and so does every other minister, and so does every other church. Because where there are people right now, you're going to see and hear and be exposed. Uh, you may, you may, be in one church or another, but in every gathering of people in the day we live in right now, in the time we live in, there are imperfections that exist in relationships one to another, in attitudes one to another, in personalities one to another, um, and there can be sin in the camp. Uh, there will be, because we're not without sin. But on the other hand, we don't condone that sin. We don't, we don't approve of that sin if there is sin. And there will be sin. Somewhere there will be a sin uh, that has to be dealt with in the imperfect church. But what we do is we carefully watch and know that we are not going to stumble or let that cause us to lose our zeal, our desire. Uh, to work for him, our desire to help others around us that are, are striving as we are, and then relate that, relate that to uh, the apostle or the elder that is over that work, and then hear his advice on it or his counsel, and then have confidence and that advice and that counsel that he knows and sees. Now, if he says, I don't care about knowing anything about what you have to say, 
that that's uh, that's not a shepherd. That isn't a man of God. Uh, if he says, "Well, right," you and I will pray about it. We'll we'll look at it, and we'll see, and we'll pray about it. And I know the Lord will lead me. I know the Lord will lead the church, and we will not let that uh, become a stumbling block uh, to the church. But we will understand the problem and see it, and then the Lord will deal with it, and we will deal with it because this is a judgment seat of Christ. All the precious people that uh, involve themselves in matters that are not pertaining to them as being disembodied. And in his instructions in 1 Timothy 5, uh, 13. Yes. His instructions to them. Yes. Um, Sister Annette spoke of that, yes. Um, the, the thing is that um, the divine order of God, and that's what we're dealing with. And, and this is a very open Bible class, and I want you to understand, Sister Shirley, thank you for participating in it. And anyone else, Sister Annette, uh, and here's Brother Steve, hand up, all right? Uh, Brother Marlowe, uh, when is it all right for an individual that's not an elder or a sister to correct an elder when he's in his area and is informing somebody properly. I wouldn't do that. That's what I thought. Uh, the scripture said, "Rebuke not an elder." If you're not in that place, I wouldn't rebuke an elder. I would go to an elder that can help me with that problem or that issue. I would find me an elder that would hear and will listen. See, God does not have um, his church without carrying elders. And every elder that wears the office of an elder, he may have the ability to be an elder, but there's a possibility he may not have the spirit to be an elder. He, have the, he may have the uh, knowledge but he may not have the spirit to be an elder. And if an elder, you feel an elder needs a rebuke, then find an elder that you can confide in without making that other elder an object of scorn or ridicule, but caring one for another. And let that elder then advise you and then go to that other elder and deal with that elder. Because if he needs a rebuke, there's someone over him in the Lord. I have someone over me in the Lord. I know there are men in the body of Christ that are above me. And I know that somewhere they will talk to me and I have been checked and I have been advised, I have been counseled by men that I knew were over me in the Lord, and I respected them because I knew uh, that they were over me in the Lord. Uh, you, if an if a elder loses his ability to live the life or to be subject to counsel or puts himself above correction, there are elders that can and will correct that elder, and you have the right uh, to um, counsel with them. Uh, that's in a multitude of counselors, their safety. That, that's why that in this assembly right here, I don't, I don't, I haven't labored to place this, el uh, this church under my sole authority. But I give authority to the elders around me. If Brother May came to me, I consider him an elder. I know the elders of this church. I know who they are, and and so if he would come to me, I'm speaking this as an example, and he would uh, say to me, uh, Brother Marlowe, there's something I want to counsel with you about. I'm going to hear him because I know that this man would not come at me without there's a reason. So I'm subject to counsel. In a multitude of counselors, there's safety. If you find a man that isn't subject to counsel, he's not an elder. No, sir. 
He's not an elder. If you find a sister that's not subject to counsel, because sisters are also involved in ministry and the church. We speak of elders. Did you know sisters are sisters? They're sons of God that qualify as elders in the church. They don't have that term, elders. There's uh, Phoebe in the 16th chapter of um, Romans, isn't it? It's all here. Or Corinthians, which is that? Um, when Paul wrote and said, uh, you receive her. Let's get that. This is a very good subject. And we need this. We need this. I'm, I, don't, I don't draw back from a subject like this because I'm working on order and I'm working on charity. And I want you saints to have that in your life. And I want you to know that Brother Marlowe does not draw back from dealing with the worst issue or the best issue concerning the, the, the governing and the blessings of the church. Because I'm in this for life eternal. Aren't you? Yes, I'm in this for life eternal. Yes, I'm not in this to make a reputation or a name. But let, well, let's get that in, um, concerning Romans, isn't it? All right, let's, let's look at that to show you what I'm saying. Uh, here. See, I did not see this when I started preaching the gospel. I did not see this. I did not see the place of the woman in the church. I did not see the gifts and callings of the woman. I only saw the gifts and callings of a man. I have learned much in my time in the ministry. I recognize sons of God. I don't recognize gender. Gender is not in the scriptures when it comes to gifts and callings of God. We are sons of God. And God gives gifts unto men. But that word men was pertaining to the 12 apostles. That's why he said unto men in Ephesians, the fourth chapter. But he also gives gifts unto women who are sons of God. And there is no gender when those gifts are given out, whether it be a, a man, male, masculine, or whether it be feminine gender, we are sons of God. I respect you sisters. I respect your calling. I respect the elders, the sons of God, men. So look, look at this. We'll leave this quickly, but this one, I commend unto you, and the band is coming in, so right? we'll take this subject up next week, by the way. Uh, we we not finished with it, so we'll come back into it. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sancria, that you receive her in the Lord as become a saint. Remember, a, an elder is a saint, yeah. called to be a saint. An apostle is a saint, yeah. called to be a saint. That term saint is called to be, that you receive her as become a saint, and that you assist her. Now, he's, he's writing to elders of the Church of Rome and telling them to assist this sister Phoebe in whatsoever business she hath need of you, for she hath been a succor, a healer of many and of myself also. Um, then he goes on and enumerates others. Uh, a succor, a help. And Paul said she's even been a help to me. What I'm saying here in our line on order tonight is that when there is a subject in the assembly that has become a live wire and it can electrocute, it can uh, discourage, it can hurt, um, then when you see that it needs counsel, right on up, safety, a multitude of counselors is safety, and Sister Shirley said uh, when she counseled with an elder, you did the right thing. Oh, she did. You did the right thing, and that's order, that's divine right. order. Now, that that elder counseled with me, 
And uh, I, so now I know, I know where the electrical line is. Uh, I'm not going to, as an elder, subject to counsel from the other elders, I'm not going to let that line lie there where it can electrocute. But in a multitude of counselors, there's safety. The order that's in this assembly is good enough that we can we can institute um, the the order that Sister Annette spoke of when there's a transgression that is an offense, then we take it to that person. Then if they don't hear Brother Stewart and myself, if they don't hear us, then we'll gather others. And finally, there will be a proper judgment of that. But don't let that become an electrical line that many, many would be uh, electrocuted by because everyone is not qualified to handle knowledge or subject matter, um, but you can be and I can be. And we can become a bulwark to keep the assembly so that the assembly is blessed to the Lord. And then we can also, uh, the Apostle Peter, I like this scripture, he said, let him know, or James, isn't it? Is it James? James. Let him know, uh, James 5, I guess 20 or so, let him know, he that converteth a sinner from the error of his way, shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sin. You say you hide sin? Yes, you hide sin. You don't make it broadcast to everyone and anyone. It's not a breakfast table conversation. It's not a supper time conversation. It's, it's not a conversation on the grounds. Uh, you hide that. Uh, so save a soul. You, you hide it. That is, you cover it by you knowing the order of God that is going to be dealt with and is being dealt with and will be dealt with because there's a proper order there. And I believe in that way that sinner could be saved, a soul from death, and then they can hide a multitude of sins from the innocent babes and lambs that would be in the church. How does that order sound? Is that all right? Is that biblical? Well, if it isn't biblical, then bring me in oh, something that is. You know, because I'm, I'm open for a order. And if, that, if this isn't biblical, what I'm teaching here, bring me the biblical order. And let me hear the biblical order. That is. Peter said, and above all things have fervent charity. He talked about charity. And above all things have fervent charity. Among yourself. For charity shall cover the multitude. Pardon me? Philippians 4, the two, one and two verses. Philippians 4, 1 and 2. All right. I think. God for a body of people that can take a subject like this and discuss it in the love of God and uh, and just grow in grace and be uh, lifted up and when we leave here tonight uh, feel like we've grown up in the Lord. We've grown in grace because this is some of the teachings that built and brought together the body of Christ. And it separates us from the church world. It separates us from the world of judgment. And I thank God that you and I can have this kind of Bible study and deal with it and love one another and even love one another more intent. And love, love the offender that may be offending and not realizing they're offending uh, as they would be 
And then, if they do realize it, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it becomes a sin. It is a sin. Uh, Sister Jenny. Well, Brother Moore, I wonder if maybe I do it wrong. Because you teach us to take our burdens and to the Lord, and to lay them Yes, I do. And to, to pray for one another. And, and the Lord fights our battles for us. We don't fight our battles. He does. And if we give them to the Lord or we lay them on the altar, then we're to forget it and let it go. He's already got it handled. Mm -hmm. In his time and in his way, correct? He will judge mm -hmm. to the uttermost. Right. He will judge to the last farthing. Um, but he, then, Brother Marlowe. Yes, sister. Sure. You know, but but then that discounts everything you have just said. You know about bringing the problems. No, to the I was talking. No, it doesn't. I was talking about order, Sister Shirley. Now, uh, Jenny said, "Take it to the Lord and leave it there." That's you individually. You're laying your burdens on the Lord, but then you still have you still have you biblical order, right? And so you have that right, she has that right, you have that right to go and counsel with ministry because there's safety in ministry. See, uh, both those things works. Uh, what we were singing yesterday, I'm late when I lay my burden down, and I turned to some of the brethren last night in the service who were singing that song, and I lay my burden down. I said, the problem is we don't lay burdens down. We come into church to worship, and we're carrying a basket full of burdens. Yes, uh, and, and it's hard for us to be lifted in the Lord. Right. It's hard for us to be lifted up in the Spirit because we're carrying the burden of baskets. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. But also, now let's bring in the point Shirley made there. Right. Also, then take that and go to the council. For in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. But go to the council. Don't carry the burden around and and everybody and anybody that wants to talk about it or wants to say something about it. Don't just don't just break it off. Don't say, let no, it I, fester. Pardon me. Don't let it fester. Don't let it fester. Just just uh, just take it to the Lord and leave it there. On the other hand, you have a ministry, Shirley, that loves you. You have a ministry that loves you. And I you're have to bring it to the ministry. Pardon me? I take it to the Lord. Yes. But I'm also to bring it to the ministry. Exactly. You know, like... Biblical order. Okay. Because, you know, scripture-wise it says, take it to the Lord and leave it there. Well, how many of us can take it to the Lord and leave it there? Not I mean, many. Not, not many. everybody. <laughs> not many. I mean, I've tried that, and it hasn't worked very many times for but me. Some can, but not, not everybody. Not very many. It hadn't that. worked that much yeah. for me. Uh, and, and so the Lord has provided then that you then have a council, and you take it to the council. <laughs> I'm glad the Lord. Not that much. I'm glad the Lord has um, in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word is established. <laughs> That's, Shirley, I have used both of those. I have taken it to the Lord. And sometimes I've had to take it to counselors. Okay, that's the one. It works. Mm -hmm. Sister Jenny. I remember in 1985 when I first came to this church, I used to see people after church go up to Brother Marlo and just always just pour his burdens on him. After church, it was, it was a mind giving thing. And the very first time, I never forgot this, and I love it, and I learned from it. The very first time I went up and I sat down to talk to Brother Marlowe about my problem, we were sitting right there in the very front seat, and I started to tell him my problem, and he looked at me and he goes, Jenny, we all have problems. I was crushed. I was literally crushed. I told you the truth. I watched all these people go to him and tell him the truth, and that's what he told me. We all have <laughs> <laughs> and, and I took that home with me, and I, I do a oh, talk on that for a couple of days. And then it dawned on me, <laughs> then it dawned on me what he was doing to me. He wanted me to know that I'm to take my problems the 
same place he was going to take my problem. Yes, to the Lord. And the same place he takes his problem. To the Lord. You take him to the Lord. And I learned that from you in 85, and I never forgot. <laughs> Thank so God you, you got to the end. That's why I say, <laughs> I, I take him to the Lord. No, I don't. No, I don't. I take him to the Lord, and I leave him there. You got that. You got that. He insisted. She taught me that. And she leaves them there. You know, i got something humorous to say at the end of this, because we've had a, one of our heavy sessions we've had. <laughs> but it's been good. And we, and we, we these sessions we need, uh, and as we go next week in, uh, to a subject dealing with doctrine, because that's where Brother Souter has also dealt with doctrine. And I want to take the subject uh, uh, one of his subjects on four major doctrines and deal with it as William Souders dealt with it. So this session has been good because it will prepare us for the next one. But uh, of something humorous. Now, at 80, after all these years of listening <laughs> to <laughs> the needs of the church, if you're not careful, I'm able to sleep while you're talking to me. <laughs> because I, <laughs> I found myself doing that when I'm trying to drive or when I'm trying to listen intently. And Sister Marlo worries about me all the time. And, and so, uh, you know, but she also prays for me. But... You know, God has a way of, uh, however it is, when we're young and vigorous, we want to handle the world, get older, while the sleep and the rest comes, yeah. and we just get very restful, yeah. very peaceful. Well, the Lord gives me elders. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I want to tell you, thank you for that, yeah. because you taught me how to take care of it for myself. I'm glad. And heaven forbid, if anything should ever happen to you, and I didn't know that, and I always ran to you, if something were to happen, I would feel so lost because I never learned where to go to begin with. But you take it to the Lord. Thank you. Because and that's what there. you taught me a long time ago. Isn't that beautiful, though? It is beautiful. That, to oh. me, is a true act of God. When you're willing to say, hey, this is what you've got to do. And that's, that's a mastery in your life, Sister Jane. And thank God for that mastery in your spirit. And we commend that. Uh, we've had a wonderful session. You've been a participant, you that have, and you that have been with your spirit. Thank God for this good night. And everybody be encouraged. Let no one be discouraged by order or by the subject we dealt with or by even offenses or even things that we see as flaws or imperfections. Let us be encouraged. God is going to see us through and he will help us. God bless you. And have a good night's rest, everybody. Take time to mix and mingle. Don't rush out of the building. No. <laughs>